Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a beautiful close-up eye. Eyes are really popular as painting subjects because they're so colorful, they're so detailed, and of course they are the window into the soul after all. So to start out, I'm going to show you guys my reference photo here. It's this beautiful photo I got from Pixabay. You can find it there and I'll also leave a link in the description. My paper today is Fabriano Artistico 140 pound hot press paper. Now hot press paper is a smoother surface. I'm using three different Lebenzin brushes. I have my water jars and a paper towel. And to start out with the sketch, I just like to roughly block in the basic shapes. The sketch for this one was fairly simple. It's not a perfect circle. You can see it's slightly oblong or almost cherry shaped. And getting the angles correct can be a little bit tricky. But if you have a printout of your image in the exact same size as the paper you're sketching on, that can help a lot. So we're just getting the basic shapes and highlights. You wanna make sure to indicate where those highlights and darkest areas are. Anything that you're gonna to need to know for your painting is important to notate with your sketch. So as soon as you have enough information that you can feel confident with painting, that's how you know your sketch is finished and you can start painting after that. So with just a few little marks here and there, I didn't do much with those striations in the eye. Most of that will be done with paint. So I'm starting with my Lebenzin Large Goat Synthetic Blend Brush and taking clean water and painting it all over the upper lid of the eye. It is possible to do wet and wet with hot press paper, but you have to work really fast because it dries so fast. This first color is just burnt sienna, quite watered down, and I'm just painting it all around the eye itself, including inside of the shadow areas to the right of the eyeball. All of this will be covered up with multiple layers of color. So if it looks a little messy at first, don't worry. Just keep pushing, keep painting. I'm darkening that up and leaving a slight highlight in the center of that shape. To make black, I combine my indigo and transparent brown oxide. Sometimes you have to turn your paper to get the right angle. And then to make that a smooth transition from the eyelid into the shadow shape, I'm using burnt sienna and gently scrubbing along that edge to encourage the paint to soften and blend. It's important when you want soft edges like this to make sure you don't have too much water in your brush. Always be blotting on a paper towel to control that so that you don't end up with any unwanted blooms. I'm taking that black combo again and painting in the right side of the eye. You can see how quickly hard edges are formed on the hot press paper, but if you're using a good quality cotton paper, it's easy enough to just scrub out those edges and smooth them a little bit manually. You can see to connect the iris to the eyeball, I'm using that black, but I'm trying to paint that all wet next to wet so that the paint is encouraged to blend side by side and naturally on the paper. While the paint is wet, you can also begin to pull some of that black up and inward towards the center of the eye, starting to suggest those striations in the eyeball. And then I'm taking my burnt sienna combination and continuing to darken the lower lid, softening the edges as much as possible. This photograph has so many soft edges, and this can be tricky to do in hot press paper especially, but do a lot of gentle scrubbing and wet and wet as much as possible and you will be able to achieve really soft edges and a beautiful diffused look with your paint. I'm now taking some more watered down burnt sienna and darkening the inner corner of the eye. I'm using a little bit of gamboge nova here, that's that bright yellow color. Adjust your colors based on how warm or cool they are in the reference photo. This can be easily recognized depending on how much you know about the color wheel. If you guys would like to know more about color theory, I do have a video about that in my Watercolor Jumpstart course, and you can download my free PDF in the description below. You can see a hard edge formed here, so I'm taking the tip of my brush and gently scrubbing that out. I'm darkening the white of the eye slightly. Even the white of the eye is very rarely pure white, so you may need to apply a thin layer of paint to make it look more realistic. This yellow tone here is Gamboge Nova. It's a Holbein warm yellow, and I'm using that to begin painting the center of the iris. I'm using a slight scrubbing motion to pull the paint out in a way, almost like sunbeams away from the center of the eye. Still sticking with my large brush here, but it's probably time to switch soon. As you work on details, using smaller brushes can be helpful, but you can see these Lebenzin brushes really do come to nice fine points. This color, of course, is Burnt Sienna. It's one of my most favorite colors. I use it for just about every single painting. And when applied over the top of the Gamboge Nova, it's helping it look really nice and orange, just like you see in the center of the eye in the reference photo. 
Now, you don't need to use any green for this image, although the eye looks like it has green in it. But remember that when you combine yellow and blue, you get green. So if you layer ultramarine blue over the top of that yellow, you're going to get the effect of green inside of the eye. That's what I'm doing now. I'm taking some thin layers of ultramarine and painting those all around in the outer edges of the iris, allowing that color to overlap the yellow slightly, and that's creating that green effect. Where you want the blue to be stronger, just grab more pigment in your brush and apply another layer over the top. Be sure to preserve certain areas of the eye that do not have any yellow in them if you want them to look more blue. Before we go on, I wanted to let you guys know that if you feel like this video is moving a little bit too fast, good news, this tutorial is available in real time. Just head over to emilyolsonart.com where you can sign up to become a member of my watercolor mastery program. Included in the membership are over 90 real time fully narrated tutorials. All include a reference photo, a traceable line drawing, and a complete list of materials used in each project. I'm adding new content just about every week, so you'll never be bored and there will always be some new project to work on. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out, and let's get back to the video. You can see I'm always moving my brush in the direction that I see movement in the eye. Here I'm moving around in a circular shape around the eye, sort of mimicking what I see in the reference photo, and trying to continue to soften edges here and there darkening wherever I need to. With watercolor you might find that you'll have to layer a lot because when the paint starts to dry it begins to lighten as well. So multiple layers will be your best friend when you're working with something complex like this. Now using my black combination which is indigo and transparent brown oxide I'm beginning to paint some really dark details in the center of the iris. I'm trying to maintain nice straight lines for those. Here on the left side of the eye, we see sort of a circular shape where the dark blue is encircling that highlight. I'm really slowing down now and using smaller brushes for these details. This fully synthetic itty bitty orange synthetic brush is really, really helpful. It has a nice stiff bristle and works well for these details. Darkening wherever needed, be sure to avoid your highlights. It's important to paint around those if you want your eye to look super realistic and to really pop off the page. Be careful to paint around your highlights. We're layering now with darker and darker paint and being more specific with brush strokes, starting to paint the little reflection of the window in that highlight and adding these little black striations in the eye. If they start to look a little too linear and detailed, you can always scrub those out a little bit. Now for the pupil, I'm just taking my pure black paint. You can use lamp black or you can use your combo that you've mixed up and just carefully painting the round shape of the eye. It's important to note your reference photo. If there's a highlight that overlaps that, be sure to indicate that in your painting. And then to make it look even more real, you can take the tip of a tiny brush and create this almost fur texture using short little brush strokes coming away from the eye, almost like fuzzy little sunbeams coming right out from the center of the pupil. I'm continuing to darken with more burnt sienna and little hints of yellow here and there and then taking a lighter gray combination and continuing to fill in the left side of the eye. This highlight was just a little bit too large, so I'm making it a little smaller and a little more detailed and darkening with a nice mid-tone gray. For the reflection of the sky in the window in the eye, I'm using turquoise blue. It's one of my favorite cool blues. And then I'm darkening underneath the highlight in the lower lid. You can see this is a little indication of the moisture of the eye, so it's an important little details to note with your painting. And then one more time I'm darkening the inner corner of the eye using transparent brown oxide with a little indigo mixed in. You can see my first layer with that shadow shape was very streaky. So now that it's completely dry, it's safe to go over it again with another layer of dark paint. Try to retain the look of dark to light. There's definitely a gradient where the shadow is emerging into the light. Now for the eyelashes, these are just black and a little bit of brown mixed in and I'm using a nice tiny little brush to try to paint each of those in one quick swooping brush stroke. Eyelashes are so much fun, it's like the icing on the cake and it really starts to look like a real eye once you've added these final details. Oftentimes you'll see a reflection of those eyelashes in the highlight of the eye and this is an example of that. You can see it looks even more realistic when you add those reflections in the highlight. And then the lashes on the lower lid begin to be less detailed as they turn towards the shadow. 
I'm softening the edges of the highlight and continuing to add a few final details, darkening the inner corner of the eye one more time. And then if some of these lines got a little bit too detailed, I'm scrubbing those out slightly and just softly blending them so that it's not quite so detailed. The softer the better. I tend to spend a lot of time softening and scrubbing and manipulating the paint after it's already been put down. Of course, this is only possible if you're using high quality watercolor paper. So there's the finished eye. I hope you guys enjoyed this study. I'll see you in the next video.